Hello everyone and welcome to another Pedrosa travel adventure. Today we are going to explore the town of Papantla. Papantla is a Pueblo Magico and was established in the 1200s by the Totonac tribe. This was the first tribe that Hernan Cortez met when he landed in Mexico in 1519. Papantla is in the state of Veracruz. When Hernan Cortez got to Veracruz, he found a magical land where people could fly and they could eat orchids. Today, the magic continues, and I want to show you some of the cool things that you can still discover in the land of the Totonacs. Well, the first thing that you need to know about Papantla is that it's going to take a while to get there. Unless you rent a car, the best way to get there is by bus. You can do this by going to the North Bus Station to Mexico City and taking the ADO bus. They leave about every hour and the cost is 500 pesos, which is about 25 USD. We stayed at the Hotel Tajin, which we enjoyed because it was a decent hotel and it was close to the plaza. We have air conditioning and Wi-Fi in here. Simple bathroom. That's what it looks like. And I'm going to turn on the air conditioning. In most Mexico City, the plaza is where you want to go. And in Papantla, that was no exception. It is a small plaza, but it's important because it kind of gives you a cross-reference of all the things that you can see in Papantla. Besides, if you don't take your picture in front of the letters, can you really say that you were there? Imposing on the plaza is the church of Nuestra Señora de la Asunción. This church was first constructed in the year 1570, but the version that you see today is from 1895. Inside the church is interesting. The decorations were sparse, but what's very interesting is the way that the nuns were dressing. Instead of wearing a habit like most Catholic nuns do, they wore native outfits, a nod to the modern and the ancient customs mixing in the city. After the service, you can go out to the courtyard of the church and you will see a large pole. This is where they dance the dance of the voladores. The exact origin of the voladores dance is unknown, but it is known and replicated throughout the country. If you see a dance anywhere else, it's probably from Papantla. Five men climb up the really big pole and then four of them spin off the pole while the fifth guy is playing a flute and drum. The dance is very ancient and is believed to be a ritual to ask the gods for a good harvest. Along the base of the church you will see this beautiful three-dimensional mural. This mural was created by an artist named Teodoro Cano. Cano is relatively unknown by the world, but if you've been to Mexico City, you might have seen his work. Wait a minute, isn't that Diego Rivera's mural? Yes, it is, but it was Teodoro Cano who was a student who helped him put it together. Teodoro Cano is a remarkable artist from the state of Veracruz. His artistic style reflects the traditions and the culture of not only Veracruz, but also of the Totonac tribe. In addition to the mural on the church walls, you can see his work on the dome of the bandstand in the plaza and more up close in the free museum that is just a couple blocks from the plaza. Cano was known for his Totonacan influences and for making things in plastics. And we saw outside his murals. See some cultural images. This talks of the Day of the Dead celebrations where people remember their loved ones by putting an altar and food to their loved ones. Over here is the pitaya, which is a local fruit. And over here is Christmas, celebrating Christmas, so that's kind of cool. As you branch outside of the plaza, you will discover something that Hernan Cortez was very anxious to bring back with him to the old world, that being vanilla. The reason why Hernan Cortez was so anxious to bring vanilla is because it is the second most expensive spice in the world. Only saffron is more expensive than vanilla. To learn a little bit more about the history, I went to the outskirts of the town and visited an echo park called Echo Park Hanath. The owner's name is Jose Luis and he used to live in the city, but he decided he wanted to live a more peaceful life so he packed up his stuff and went out to the forest to live. The tour cost about 300 Mexican pesos or about $15 USD. On the tour, we learned that vanilla comes from the only edible orchid in the world. 
all other orchids are deadly to humans. When vanilla was first discovered in the West, Spain had a monopoly on the production of it because it would only blossom in Mexico, which meant that only Mexico had vanilla pods. The French tried to grow it in their colonies, but it didn't get any pods. The reason was discovered that there was a special bee that only lived in Mexico, and that special bee pollinated the vanilla plant. It wasn't until the year 1830 when a slave in Madagascar discovered that if you maneuvered a stick in a certain way that he could pollinate the vanilla plant without the special bee. It was cheaper to grow the vanilla plant in Madagascar and that is why most vanilla pods that you buy today in the United States are from Madagascar and not Mexico. Take the tour with Jose Luis Farm you will learn about this and get to see how the vanilla is extract is made. I also found out that honeybees in Mexico have a special honey, but that's a different story altogether. With the aroma of vanilla, it is very easy to get hungry. Luckily, there are many great places to eat in Papantla. I'm going to suggest two places, but if you go, I'm sure you can find many more places to eat. The first place that we went to was called Plaza Pardo. I like Plaza Pardo because it's right by the plaza and it has a nice terraza with a delicious breakfast where you could see everything that was going on in the plaza. Breakfast looks pretty good, 80 pesos. The most expensive one here it looks like is 120 pesos. Breakfast I decided to have bocoles, which are like gorditas but they're smaller with some beans. Charge for hot cakes, bocoles, some tea, and horchata, and some eggs was 260, which is about $13. The second place that I'm going to recommend is the Naku restaurant. This place is not in the city center, but taxis are relatively cheap, so if you can, I would definitely go there. The Naco restaurant celebrates its Totonac roots and the Veracruz roots in its food and its music. It's a great place to just go and hang out and look at the walls and see everything that there is to see at this great restaurant. I personally ordered the ribs and they cost about $10 but they were huge and the meat fell right off. I think the best part about this meal was not only do they play live music there, but they also do a live show right in front of your table. It was amazing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of Papantla, a Pueblo Magico. I can't say that we did everything in Papantla, but that's the best part about travel. You can always discover more. If you did like this video, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow, and we will see you in the next video. Thank it's you for a watching. hairless dog. Hi, Mr. Hairless Dog. Very good. This is interesting. The announcements are in both in Spanish and the Tokonaka language, so that's very interesting.